Okay, it's been a hot minute since I genuinely discussed a cartoon on my channel, so I want to get back to my roots for a sec. The last time I talked about a cartoon, I reviewed the Dexter's Laboratory episode Last But Not Beast. The main reason why I did that was because it was originally meant to be the finale of the series, and I praised it for being an extremely epic conclusion. However, it got me thinking. Although it's always nice to see shows end on a high note, it's arguably even more important that shows begin on a high note. So I started thinking about my favorite cartoon pilots and I came up with some pretty good ones. Help Wanted from Spongebob is of course a classic, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends has a really good one, and I even really like the way my life as a teenage robot started. But for me, there's one pilot in particular that I think is so good, yet went under most people's radars due to it being attached to a lesser known cartoon. And obviously, judging by the title and thumbnail of the video, you can tell that I am talking about the Mighty Bees pilot. But why? Why do I think it's so good? Some of you probably don't even remember the pilot. Well, hopefully by the end of this video you will understand what I'm talking about because today we will be analyzing the first episode of The Mighty Bee titled So Happy Together. So sit back and relax because you might have some fun with this one. Uh -huh. <laughs> so funny. I hate myself. Stick around, the Mighty Bee is buzzing your way next, right here on Nicktoons. If you are like me, you're always looking for ways to make cooking easier and more enjoyable. That's where today's sponsor, HelloFresh, comes in. HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service that delivers fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and recipes to your door. All you have to do is cook them. Boom. Easy as pie. And with the prices of groceries getting higher every single day, now is the perfect time to try it out. It'll save you a trip to Giant, or Food Line if you live in the South. HelloFresh offers a variety of meal plans to choose from, so you can find one that fits your dietary needs and preferences. You can also choose how many meals you want per week and the number of servings per meal. And because the ingredients are pre-portioned, there's no waste. It makes cooking time so much easier no lines at the store, no talking to customer service, just good old home delivery. Plus, you don't have to worry about getting any rotten food because the ingredients are picked at peak ripeness for quality and taste and shipped in a timely but safe manner. Right now, yes, right now, you can get a special discount on your first order. Just go to the link in the description and use the discount code on the screen and in the pinned comment to get a special discount on your first order at checkout. The episode, which premiered on April 26, 2008, starts off with Bessie Higginbottom, voiced by comedian Amy Poehler, putting on her gear and getting dressed for the next morning. One of the things she does is draw a smiley face on her index finger. Why, you might ask? Well, her finger, appropriately named Finger, is actually a recurring character in the show. Bessie often talks to her finger for advice or just to air out her frustrations. Obviously, he, he doesn't ever respond back because, well, that... That would be weird, but sometimes it genuinely does help Bessie solve her problems, and we see that a lot throughout the show. Bessie does a few jumping jacks and proceeds to make her way out of the house, but not before tripping on the carpet. Or air? I'm not sure what she tripped on, honestly. She just kind of fell out of nowhere. Bessie leaves the house and passes by her mother's restaurant to say goodbye. Her brother, Ben, asks if he can come to her troop meeting, to which Bessie responds with... Ben throughout the show was hell-bent on getting into at least one troop meeting, so that's another thing that they introduced. Continuing her stroll, Bessie gets greeted by a bunch of people, showing that Bessie has a great relationship with everyone in her neighborhood, and that they all know her by name. She's not just some regular normal girl to them. All the adults know that there's something special about Bessie. Even the neighborhood hippie is tight with her. To me, that is how a protagonist should be introduced in a series. They don't go out of their way to show how people feel about Bessie, they just kind of show you, and it's very, very natural. Bessie then approaches the Chinese food restaurant that she uses as a shortcut. Mr. Wu, the owner of this shop, realizes that Bessie is there. Bessie gets real serious real quick and prepares to battle Mr. Wu. The customers of the restaurant then turn into ninjas to begin the battle. Turns out it was actually just Bessie's imagination the entire time, which makes a lot more sense. 
These little dream sequences were things that they would do frequently in the show, making it yet another thing that this episode introduced. Mr. Wu gives Bessie a dumpling, and she continues to make her way to the troop meeting. Bessie passes by her friend Rocky, voiced by Kenan Thompson. Wanna hang out with us? I wish I could stop, but I can't, I'll see you later. Oh, man. We then have yet another fantasy sequence where Bessie flies through the air as the mighty bee, but eventually she gets knocked back down to reality. Literally. Mighty B. We then meet three new characters, Portia, Penny, and Gwen. Portia and Gwen are, in a way, the series' main antagonists. They aren't really villains, but they definitely have a disliking towards Bessie. It's really a Spongebob and Squidward type situation, or a Zeke slash Luther and Kojo situation. I love how effortlessly I fit Zeke and Luther into all my videos. You guys gotta give me some sort of award for this. I'm, I'm really good at it. Penny, on the other hand, is the Patrick to Bessie's Spongebob, despite the fact that she's often hanging around Portia and Gwen. And when I say she's basically a human version of Patrick, boy do I mean it. I found a peanut. Portia's kind of like Sharpay from High School Musical, but with a really heavy Valley Girl accent, and Gwen is portrayed to be Portia's rough-mannered sidekick. Portia tells Bessie that the dog she's currently holding is going to be trained for the Honey Bee Dog Show, where the winner gets the Animal Appreciation Badge. Mm, but you don't have a dog anyway, Bessie. Guess you're not gonna get the badge this time. One thing I really appreciate about this show is that occasionally it'll skip in between animation frames and just go straight from pose to pose. Now admittedly, this wasn't the best example of this because only her eyes were moving, but when accompanied with the right sound effect, it creates a much bigger and sharper impact. In the next scene, we see that Bessie is bugging her mom about getting a dog so she can compete in the Honey Bee Dog Show. And after giving her over 700 reasons why she thinks she should have one, Bessie's mom, whose name is Hillary, agrees to let her go out to rescue a dog. But the only thing is, she has to bring her brother Ben. While the two are on their way to rescue a dog, Bessie explains to Ben that in order to fully become the Mighty Bee, the character we see in her daydreams and fantasies, she has to collect over 4,000 more honeybee badges, which is why she desperately wants to adopt a dog so she can have it compete in the dog show. Just then, Ben points out that there's a stray dog not too far away from them. Bessie approaches him and helps him out by scratching his back, something that makes the dog very happy. She introduces herself but quickly notices that the dog has a torn ear, which to her makes him even cooler. She asks him if he wants to be her dog, and he quickly makes an escape only for Bessie to lasso the collar around his neck, basically forcing him to be domesticated. Oh man, you're so happy, I'm gonna name you happy. There it is right there. See, she did it again. I love how they animate the characters in this show. This Mighty B, not the best time for you to go anywhere. We've still got more Mighty B after the break. Overachievers rejoice. Your hero has returned. Mighty B is back. In the next scene, Bessie is seen teaching Happy dog obedience. She does this by teaching the dog to stay even though Happy is tied up to a tree. Bro really can't go anywhere even if he wanted to. She then teaches him how to fetch, another activity he has no interest in. And the most important dog trick of them all, ballroom dancing. Ben is getting frustrated by Happy's lack of enthusiasm and calls him the worst dog ever. Bessie is quick to defend him and says that despite Ben's pessimism, Happy is the best dog ever, and he will win the dog show. At the dog show, we get a quick look at Portia's mom, who is the Honey Bee Troop leader, paying the judge of the show to guarantee a win for her daughter. This doesn't surprise me at all. Bessie shows Happy to Portia and Gwen, only for them to make mean jokes about him, which causes Happy to run away. Bessie tracks him down and asks what's wrong. She then channels her inner Eliza Thornberry and communicates with Happy about his feelings on being in the dog show and really just being Bessie's dog in general. He explains that he wants his old life back and Bessie understands. Fly free, sing out loud, right if you can't. Where are you going? Bro, that dog said zero. <laughs> Man, I like this show. So this specific episode may not be the best example considering how she's been treating Happy, but overall, I do like Bessie as a character. I think she's an example of an annoying character that doesn't actually annoy the audience, at least for me. She's a fun and charming character, and hopefully I'll get to expand more on that if I choose to review the series. Finger, who basically serves as Bessie's therapist, tells her that she's in the wrong and needs to let him go. And she agrees. 
Meanwhile at the dog show, Portia and her dog are walking down the stage as Rocky and Ben boo her in disgust. We then go back to Happy walking back to the city as he gets flashbacks on all the love that Betsy showed him. He considers going back but ultimately rips up the thought bubble, which I gotta say is a really solid visual gag, and walks away. Back at the dog show, things are going pretty well for Portia, but Bessie still has to go up there with her dog, which is an issue for, you know, obvious reasons. She gives a speech letting everyone know that her and Happy have mutually agreed to part ways, and while she's speaking, she hears a dog barking. She gets excited thinking it was Happy, but it was actually just some random dog. She runs off the stage crying, but just then, Happy runs to her and grabs her shirt. Or is it a dress? Whatever she's wearing. Bessie asks Happy if he wants to continue to do the dog show, and he happily agrees. That wasn't even a pun like that I did on purpose in the script. It, it just kind of happened. That during a montage, we see Happy and Bessie showing off their skills to the judges and audience members. Let me tell you, man, this show is so fun. Not every episode is this good, but a lot of them do give off the same uh, positive energy, and it just makes you feel good. This episode does a good job of setting up the tone for the rest of the series, and you'll see what I mean if I decide to review the rest of the show. Or, you know, you could just watch it on Paramount+. Plus. That works too. The audience is obsessing over their performance and starts chanting their names. The judge gets nervous by this, and although he was already paid to give Portia's family the win, he calls it a tie, which makes the crowd angry. So then he decides to look at each dog's breeding and will determine the winner that way. He checks out Happy and calls him a typical beat up mutt and says that Precious is the winner. But Bessie steals the judge's microphone and says that she's okay with losing because at the end of the day, she loves Happy and Happy loves her. And that makes her happy. Oh brother, this guy stinks! She also says to tip your waitresses. The crowd boos once again and Portia's mom says that her dog is a real show dog, unlike Happy. To prove this, the judge... Well, you guys are just gonna have to see this one for yourselves. Dog. See this gorgeous set of choppers? Oh, that's not a dog! That's a rat! <laughs> this is one of my favorite Nicktoon scenes, I'm gonna be real with you. It's absolutely hilarious and it never fails to make me laugh. Even today I find myself quoting, That's not a dog! That's a rat! In random situations and it always cracks me up. Anyway, Ben takes the badge away from the judge and gives it to Bessie. Only 4,583 badges to go! Awesome! We're so close! And yeah, that's uh, that's how it ends. It kind of throws me off guard too sometimes, but that is legitimately the ending. And despite its abruptness, I like it. I like it a lot. It sets up the rest of the series really well, as does the whole episode. with more Mighty B, up next on Nickelodeon. So, final thoughts on this episode? Well, believe it or not, this is one of my favorite cartoon pilots of all time. I love almost everything about it. I don't think I've ever seen a cartoon introduce a character as well as this episode's opening sequence. The only one I'd put above it is SpongeBob's iconic I'm Ready scene from Help Wanted. And this scene is just so beautifully animated too, the jovial atmosphere of it really puts you in a good mood. The first scene of Moon Girl actually gives off really similar energy. I don't know if any of you have seen it, but uh, I'm really glad because this is how shows like this should be set up in my opinion. The only thing this pilot didn't really set up is the friendship between Penny and Bessie. You probably wouldn't even have known they were best friends from this episode unless you already knew ahead of time. But also makes sense because she had to spend most of her time with Happy to set up that character dynamic, so it's not much of an issue for me. This episode does, however, set up Bessie's relationship with everyone else. She looks at Ben as her annoying little brother, and the two often squabble. That's a fun word. She seems to be pretty close with Rocky, who, fun fact, apparently was supposed to be voiced by Kevin Hart originally. That's pretty crazy. And obviously, we met Happy, who kind of gives off the same vibe as Snoopy. If Snoopy was raised in the ghetto and had to fend for himself. And what I love about the final scene is that it quite literally sets up every episode that comes after this. I mean, obviously some episodes aren't exactly about getting new badges, but a good portion of them are. Like I mentioned before, this is one of my all-time favorite pilots, and I'm willing to give this episode a 9 out of 10. 
It had the perfect tone, the right amount of heart, and plenty of funny jokes. They truly started this show on a high note, and it's a shame that the rest of the series wasn't quite able to keep up. Although I do think it's a good show still, don't get me wrong, just a tad inconsistent quality-wise. But I'll save the rest of my thoughts for a proper Mighty B review. I am curious though, do you guys have any memory of the Mighty Bees pilot? I'd also like to know what you guys thought of the show in general. Do you want to see me review it? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and like the video if you enjoyed it. And I am Mr. Nostalgia, and I'm out for now. Peace.